Καλησπέρα σας. Καλώς ορίσατε. Καλώς ήρθαμε κι εμείς με τη σειρά μας στην πόλη της Θεσσαλονίκης. Ευχαριστούμε θερμά όλους και όλες που βρίσκεστε εδώ σε αυτό τον πάρα πολύ ωραίο χώρο. Thank you very much for being here this evening on this very beautiful premises, warehouse C at the port of Thessaloniki. I want to thank everybody who has accepted our invitation to discuss about a topic that is not easy. Our topic is a city that we all love very much, a city where each of us has their own point of reference and a city which I feel has raised issues of concern for several people in many sectors. The faces of this city are multifaceted. There are many sectors to be occupied with. There is such a great diversity. So by means of the uh, Dialogues Initiative of the uh, Stavros Nyarkos uh, Foundation, which has been going on for more than two years now, what we want to do is to keep our appointment with you all. This is what we are going to attempt to do tonight here in Thessaloniki. We will try to discuss the topic of Thessaloniki's many different faces. We mainly want to put questions forward. It would be pointless, of course, to think that it's possible to exhaust this topic within a couple of hours. We will discuss mindsets, cultures, the interaction between different religions, uh, the kind of people that keep uh, rejuvenating themselves in this way and everything that is going on in the field of culture. Welcome once again. Thank you for uh, joining us in this trip. Uh, I also wish to thank those who are uh, watching us live and we are looking forward to listening to your own opinions, to uh, the questions that uh, you would like to put uh, to our speakers who are going to discuss with each other, uh, participate in a dialogue with each other and not uh, make their own presentations. We have with us uh, Marina Tiamanda. Thank you very much for being here this evening because the city of uh, Thessaloniki is talked about in many different ways. I won't say if this is true or not, but there's a sense that uh, despite the fact that it has, it is, it is home to several brilliant uh, minds, Thessaloniki just can't, can't make them stay. There are also uh, young people trying to be innovative. Uh, we also have with us uh, Yanis Boutaris. Thank you very much for being here this evening. We are glad to uh, have you participate in our dialogues for the second consecutive time. Of course, people, the people of Thessaloniki uh, absolutely have, absolute, have absolutely no uh, need for me to uh, introduce Yanis Boutaris uh, to them. Uh, he was pioneering with regard to the Thessaloniki Holocaust Museum. We also have Mr. Andreadakis with us, as well as Ieroklis Michaelidis. Uh, thank you very much for having accepted our invitation. Thessaloniki hosts uh, an international film festival as well as a documentary uh, festival for many years now and those festivals uh, managed to uh, cope with uh, the challenges 
that were put to them. So Thessaloniki, so those festivals are now an international interlocutor. Mr. Mihailidis, I have several uh, questions regarding your Athens Thessaloniki trip. I don't know. I feel that maybe this is a trap for Thessaloniki and there are uh, many contradictions between these two cities that we're all fond of. We also we're also fond of several uh, jokes that are about this controversy, but I think that whether we come from Thessaloniki or not, Thessaloniki has a great deal to offer. Maria Gavala is a historian. The history of Thessaloniki is relevant uh, to us Greeks, but it is also relevant to the whole world. We will discuss with you certain turning points, therefore. Of course, let me reiterate that it would be naive on our part to think that uh, we will exhaust this topic. Mark Mazaur is with us. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, Mr. Mazaur. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, good afternoon from me as well. You have researched into Thessaloniki. You have researched into its history, into the history of the Jewish community. But let me say that uh, during my private discussions with our uh, speakers, Mark Mazauer and Maria Kavala brought forward the following issue. Regardless of specific chapters of history and regardless of our topics, I think the issue of the past and the history of the city of Thessaloniki viewed holistically is a discussion that has to be held. Our audience are free, of course, to put questions. And those of you who are watching us through web streaming, you have uh, snf.org slash dialogues for your comments. My first introductory question for our speakers is the following, and I will address Mrs. Chamanda first. If a 15-year-old were to ask you why it is that the city of Thessaloniki is said to be unique, what would you say? That's interesting. I would say that it's all about the character of the city and about the way in which a 15-year-old experiences Thessaloniki. It so happens that I uh, teach a 17-year-old uh, girl, I'm teaching a 17-year-old girl right now. Uh, she does not have much money to spend, but she always likes to hang out uh, uh, here at the uh, facilities of the port or near the White Tower. Of course, uh, adolescents don't like to listen to what their dad says, they, and they are not on Facebook. They use new platforms and new uh, media to communicate with each other and uh, we tend to find this frightening because other generations 
don't know about these media, which, however, open a window to the rest of the world. So one can uh, stay here and enjoy the city because from your local level, you can make it to an international level. You can work for any business that you want. You can form part of any group or team that you want from the whole world. I think your standpoint is the standpoint of OK Thess, on which I hope you will elaborate later on. Mr. Butaris, what do you think? If, what would you say if an adolescent were to ask you this question, whether they live in Thessaloniki or not? Maybe there's quite a lot that adolescents tend to ignore about Thessaloniki, and this goes for 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, or 60-year-olds. So to cut a long story short, what is it that makes Thessaloniki unique? Είναι εκείνο το κενό ουσιαστικά που προκύπτει ανάμεσα στα τόσα πολλά και τόσα λίγα που γνωρίζουμε για τη Θεσσαλονίκη. Κοιτάξτε να δείτε, καταρχήν θεωρώ ότι είναι ένα τεράστιο πλεονέκτημα. I think that Thessaloniki has the huge advantage because Thessaloniki Thessaloniki has about uh, 120 or 130,000 university uh, students in a population of 1 million. Our university uh, campus is, is uh, huge. I don't know how many similar campuses one can find in the United States, for example. All these university students are, are having fun. They are no longer subject to the supervision of their parents. You see that our cafes are full throughout the day. And Thessaloniki has the highest uh, number of uh, amateur uh, bands and uh, groups in, in Greek, in Greece, I don't know, Eurocles, if this is true or not. There is also a myth about Thessaloniki. Because Thessaloniki is usually called uh, the romantic city. Perhaps this relates to the past when the international Thessaloniki uh, fair was something unique and this was the only opportunity that uh, men and women uh, had to, uh, to break uh, free. Or that uh, was uh, because um, the uh, Entente in the First World War had uh, 250,000 soldiers uh, here and uh, 20, uh, and there, here in Thessaloniki, there were also 20,000 prostitutes. So this, this is a myth about Thessaloniki. Uh, Thessaloniki is cut to uh, the human size, but there is also a downside to it. In the 60s, after the uh, Jewish population of Thessaloniki was exterminated. Uh, Thessaloniki had 300,000 inhabitants and now it's one million people. If, if you tell a taxi driver that you want to go to Yenidzami, they don't know where this is. Shouldn't uh, Taxi drivers have to uh, 
sit an exam and know where Yeni Jami is? Is this indicative of what Greeks know about Thessaloniki? Uh, I think yes. With the exception of the Olympics, which was a time period of affluence, there was so much money around and that opening inaugural ceremony was really something. So with the exception of that, uh, Greece does not have an identity for the rest of the world and everybody says that we are uh, lazy, uh, that uh, we do not honor our deals. Uh, maybe they refer to our bailout agreements or that uh, we steal, etc., etc. But this is not so. All Greeks who live and work abroad do excel. They all do great. As to our ancient history, of course, we uh, brag about it, but what is it that we do in order to be really proud of this? I'm not saying it's in our DNA, but we're not in a position to uh, show the ancient Greeks what it is that we do now. Mr. Andreadakis, I think we have to start with the sea and, and the waterfront. I grew up on the island of Crete in Heraklio and I know how important it is for uh, the psychology of a young man or woman to be able to look at the sea at the very moment they step outside their home. And then we have all the scars that all of its history and its civilizations have left Thessaloniki with. Uh, Thessaloniki is a condensation of all the uh, civilizations that uh, went through this place, uh, the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Roman Empire, Western Europe. So uh, we are left with uh, the positive and the negative influences of the above. So all of the uh, wounds of uh, modern Greece, uh, i.e. Balkan Wars, the Second World War, the Civil War, the extermination of the Jews, the immigration, the uh, lost homelands have impacted on uh, Thessaloniki the most. Because you may have another uh, uh, city that did receive uh, people from Asia Minor, but they were not that hard hit by the, the Civil War, for example. Butaris is right about the uh, university students. Uh, university students do energize uh, Thessaloniki and we have been experiencing this for 60 years now. Uh, this year the uh, International Thessaloniki Film Festival is celebrating its 60th year. Mr. Michailidis, I will pick up from uh, where the uh, mayor left off. He reminded me of something that uh, Dionysus Savopoulos uh, said, and Dionysus Savopoulos is one of the uh, eminent uh, people of Thessaloniki. So Savopoulos said that uh, Constantinople Istanbul is now lost to the Greeks, that mother of uh, Hellenism. So Thessaloniki is the sister 
of uh, Istanbul. It's, it's the closest thing that we have to Istanbul, and maybe Greeks love Thessaloniki because of that. I don't know if this is so, because this is not so for Greeks only. Uh, foreign uh, visitors are very positive. I guess uh, this is not uh, the reason why. And if we uh, set, aside, set aside the uh, geographical factors, the waterfront, etc., I think that Thessaloniki stands out for two reasons, because it's cosmopolitan, it has always been like that, but recently it has also become, become provincial. There is this clash of these two factors. Thessaloniki is at the same time uh, outward looking, it is open to movements and to aesthetic trends, but at the same time it is so suspicious and so negative. Uh, we want to uh, manage to get rid of this second nature of ours, but it's always with us, and maybe this interior uh, clash is what makes us charming. I uh, form part of that uh, generation that uh, Mr. Butaris talked about when the whole of uh, uh, Macedonia arrived here in, in Thessaloniki. So other than uh, the geographical entity, Thessaloniki is also indicative of northern Greece, and this includes all the way from Yanena to Alexandropolis, including Thessaly. So this amounts to uh, half of Greece, actually. And there is this uh, funny confrontation between Thessaloniki and Athens. I think this is a... Greek phenomenon, just like you have these uh, antagonisms in, in most of our uh, regions. So I would say that as regards the uh, true nature of this antagonism that Thessaloniki nags about uh, certain uh, issues and it is uh, complaining to Athens about these, but other small towns and cities uh, do the same vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Thessaloniki, uh, Ceres or Kozani or other places. So tourists uh, love Thessaloniki, but they also uh, want to go uh, elsewhere, to Lake Kirkini, for example, or to Meteora. But the culture of Thessaloniki is also uh, due to its surroundings. And of course, Mr. Mazauer uh, will explain about the influences that Thessaloniki has been subject to throughout the uh, centuries. So maybe the uh, specters of the uh, Trigonion uh, Tower or Yedikule or uh, Exochon uh, Street is what makes us uh, more charming. Mrs. Kavala. I agree more or less with the previous speakers. I would say that uh, there are unique features to each and every location. As to the 15-year-olds, I have a 15-year-old son, and he and his friends say that uh, Thessaloniki is really cool. Uh, they think that it's easy to move around, it's not expensive, there are so many uh, bands. They feel safe to walk around. So they uh, travel from east to west, 
here in Thessaloniki. As to the grown-ups, Thessaloniki is the capital of refugees. It used, it used to be the Jerusalem of the Balkans. Its Jewish population was, of course, destroyed. We also have Ottoman uh, Thessaloniki. We see those influences in our cuisine. We have Byzantine Thessaloniki, the great frescoes of uh, Agios Nikolaos Orphanos. The proximity to the sea, taking a stroll along the waterfront is indeed unique. There are dark sides and bright sides in the history of Thessaloniki. The Jewish community of Thessaloniki was very much prominent in the 16th century as regards this conflict with Athens, maybe this conflict dates back to 1913 because government and state structures arrived here in Thessaloniki from Athens uh, to find this local population speaking several languages, being so culturally different, and the local population felt hostile to those structures. And, and then there's also the business community that started competing against the Athens capital. Mr. Mazower. Thank you very much. I don't think I have many things to add. My view is an outsider's view. I'm not from Thessaloniki. I don't live in Thessaloniki. I was uh, born in another big city, London, and I live in New York, of course. I love Thessaloniki very much. I think Professor Kavala uh, was very right in saying that everybody is unique and all places are unique, but the issue of uniqueness does mean something to Thessaloniki. For me, Thessaloniki is uh, Greece's true city. And I will explain. There are many uh, European cities that were founded more than two centuries uh, ago, uh, Berlin, uh, Vienna, or Paris. And there is a continuity in their life, but uh, such a continuity is uh, hard to find uh, from the antiquity onwards. Athens did have that, but for several centuries it was just a small town. Thessaloniki has never been a town or a village. Thessaloniki has always been a true city. As to your question about adolescents living in Thessaloniki, I think the answer will be about continuity. Because whenever an adolescent uh, walks along Agnatia Street, they should know that uh, they are walking on along the same street that uh, a Roman was walking along. Thank you. Just uh, something more I'd like to ask you, Mr. Mazao, since Mr. Mikhailidis earlier 
spoke about the ghosts of the city. I'd like to ask you, from your viewpoint as an observer, as you very rightly mentioned, since you have lived and were born outside Greece, and also in view of your uh, scientific uh, identity and the book that you have written about the city, do you believe that Thessaloniki is indeed a city of ghosts? And I mean this uh, from a dual perspective, both as regards its history and in relation to the way the history of the city has been addressed. And I'd like the other uh, speakers also to um, state their views on this. I think that many things have changed over the last few years. You have with you Mayor Butaris, and he uh, is also uh, has also had a very uh, uh, big share in changing uh, the historical consciousness of the city, the city of ghosts. Well, it sounds romantic, doesn't it? The city of ghosts. I would prefer uh, to think in a different way that. Uh, Ghost is something unexpected uh, in, the form, in the form of a surprise. I don't like uh, getting bored when I'm uh, in a place, and I've never been bored when I've been in Thessaloniki, neither about its past or its present. They've both always been full of surprises for me, and that's very important for me as a historian. So, Mr. Mazawa, we could say that Thessaloniki is a city of surprises? Yes, why not? If we were to look back in a concise manner, but also try to give a complete picture of the history of the city, then which are the main landmarks, do you believe, and what would we need to look into more carefully that would help us in the present and the future? Well, I don't really know where to start. Well, um, I'd like to to touch upon various aspects of the city's history. What Mr. Mazar said is very uh, important indeed because it is a city which, from the moment of its establishment, it has continuously been a city that has been involved, involving with continuity. After 1430, when it was occupied by the Ottomans, and due to the very great hardship uh, uh, experienced in the city, its population left, and then in 1492 it gets back on its feet with the coming of the Jewish population and uh, regains its identity as an urban space. I, I like the fact uh, that uh, Thessaloniki is a city of the intellect, a spiritual center, in the Byzantine years, uh, it takes advantage of the fact that it's next to the sea, uh, fisheries, commerce, and this is reflected also in arts and letters. A very important Christian center also at that time, and this is uh, depicted in its art in the uh, city's churches, uh, the frescoes that we find there. Then uh, we go to the 16th century, where the city knew its peak due to the Jewish community, which was prevalent, uh, once again a spiritual center, with the Jewish synagogues, rabbis, with advice uh, addressed from the local rabbis and synagogues to the other Jewish communities in Europe. And once again, a center where we see a development in economy, trade, letters, art. And then we move to Ottoman Thessaloniki, where the Jewish community is once again prevalent. 
And uh, we can also, of course, look at the city vis-à-vis -vis the uh, various movements that have uh, dominated its landscape in the 18th century. We have the gradual change, uh, take, changes taking place where the large empires are being dissolved, the national ideas are coming to the forefront. And this, of course, reaches the city of Thessaloniki, too, at some point. 19th century is when we witness new economic growth in the city, which is modernized, industrial development, uh, the city's walls are demolished. We have large factories such as Alatini, large businesses uh, which uh, operated like multinationals at that time, Italian Jewish families uh, of Sephardic origin coming to the city, development of trade by the Greeks and the Armenian population. And finally, we arrive at the 20th century, which uh, is actually uh, the period that I am particularly interested in and that I have worked on extensively uh, and on the relevant sources. First uh, landmark was the uh, accession to, of the city to the Greek state, which changes uh, the status of the city from uh, being an important uh, trade port of the Ottoman uh, Empire. It now becomes a small city of the Greek state. In uh, 1917, we have the Great Fire of Thessaloniki, which uh, radically changes the image of the city. Its Ottoman character, its uh, Jewish identity are burnt to cinders. and. The uh, new plan for the rebuilding of the city, its modernization, leads to the image of the city we have today uh, with uh, Aristotelus Square, large open areas. The modernization city of the city will also um, come with an effort to try and uh, highlight the Greek character of the city since the uh, political situation has changed in the meantime. And then 1922. The great idea has come to an end, the vision of expanding uh, along the coast of Turkey has come to a close and now we have the refugees arriving, a huge number of people who need to uh, settle in the city, changing completely the um, population with 100,000 refugees arriving, its ethnotic mix changes completely. It becomes a city of refugees. Interwar period, pogrom, rivalry, fascist groups like three, uh, three Epsilon in uh, the 1930s, First World War, which, as noted, was uh, something that turned into the, turned the city into a theater of war along with the fire and then world war 2 once again a very important point in time where we come to the uh, end of the jewish uh, population's history in the city 96% of uh, the jewish community is lost and this uh, uh, is of great importance for its history and its development from that point onwards. So, along with all the um, suffering of World War II, it becomes one of the cities of martyrdom of Greece, uh, leading, of course, to uh, institutions such as the Holocaust Museum. And the years after that were also filled with hardship, civil war, The uh, so-called democracy of the following decades and 
the new political um, regime that uh, took power. And there's much more to say, of course. Well, I think we needed to uh, set a geographical and a historical outline for the city because there are many gaps, at least speaking on behalf of my own generation, to the extent that I can. There are many pieces of this history that uh, we are aware of, others not. And the question is also uh, what in-depth knowledge we have of these facts. Now, let's move to the current situation. Mr. Boutaris, Mr. Skavala uh, described the city's characteristics uh, through time, the city's main uh, activities, etc. So let's uh, start uh, differently now, reversely, starting with the Jewish uh, community. What does this signify for the city? And uh, specifically the establishment of the Holocaust Museum. I'd firstly like to say that the Jewish community of Thessaloniki is now much smaller than the Jewish community of Athens, although this was completely different in the past. And of course, there is a Jewish museum in Athens as well. What I'd like to point out, however, is that the museum that we are building is not the Jewish Museum of the Holocaust, it is the Holocaust uh, Museum, a museum of human rights of the city of Thessaloniki, and mainly highlights the role that the Jewish community played in uh, the city throughout these centuries. That's why it was described as the Jerusalem of the Balkans in the past. The people of Thessaloniki need to understand this, and the Jewish people need to understand this even more because they still have some phobic syndromes in relation to the fact that uh, they are very introverted. So all the people of Thessaloniki need to understand that this museum will teach Thessalonians about their city, about the city they live in. And that is the vision that I have in my mind about the way in which this museum will operate. It will not only uh, be there for the Jewish people. The people of Thessaloniki need to understand this. What was the city like when the Jewish uh, communities arrived? After World War One, the outbreak of World War One. What uh, was the city like? We need to learn from the past. And one more thing I'd like to point out, uh, complementing what Mrs. Kavala said, in the 1920s we also had the establishment of the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, which was a major breakthrough for a region that was uh, new uh, as regards the Greek state. The new countries, uh, that came about after 1912 at the time had a general administration system and did not uh, participate in the elections. Athens uh, thought that we were cannibals, let's say, um, <laughs> to use a, a strange expression. Uh, the administration of uh, Otto's state came and tried to um, make the local population adapt. And the civil servants coming from Athens said, uh, what are we going to do with these villages? And the villages also, well, quote unquote, the people of Thessaloniki said, well, what are these people from, Thessalon from Athens doing here? And why are they messing with us? Let's get back to the Holocaust Museum, however. It is a very uh, it, uh, interesting brand name. Now, what the museum intends to do is a very interesting story. The other day we had uh, the presentation of a book from a student about the importance of uh, electronic media. Uh, and this was also related to the Jewish Museum. And I'm not ashamed to say that Andonis Georgiou um, expressed an idea. Since uh, anti-Semitism is very high uh, in Greece, uh, we have one of the highest percentage of anti-Semitism in Greece, uh, 
um, compared to other European countries. So he um, suggested we make an observatory of anti-Semitism and organize activities in order to combat anti-Semitism, basically racism, since we're talking about human rights. I hope that the museum, and I deeply believe that its educational role will not be simply to take uh, students to a museum, uh, get them all depressed, and that's it. If you want to get depressed, you can go to the museum in Auschwitz. We, we cannot make a museum like that. We don't have objects like the Museum of Warsaw, of Israel, of Auschwitz. There are thousands of museums all around the world which describe precisely this tragedy. The Museum of Thessaloniki, I believe, should use modern media and is unique because it will highlight also the Sephardic identity of the Jewish community. Other uh, Jewish people don't like the Sephardic community very much. They consider them uh, of uh, secondary importance. We should not also forget that the first Jews to come to the Saloniki were Romanyot Jews in the 50s. Uh, and uh, I say this with great pride. The mayor of Ioannina is a Romanyot Jew, and we work together very well. And of course, there will be a part of the museum dedicated to each Jewish community lost and those that uh, were preserved. However, I repeat, the role of the museum will be to highlight the tragedy, but also to have a very strong educational role. So a very vibrant uh, body, from what we understand. Yes, I was very pleased to, see, to hear what Mr. Butari said, which we have uh, repeatedly discussed, actually. Very recently, last March, actually, the uh, Thessaloniki Film Festival announced in this room a quite ambitious and daring plan, which involves a film that will be split into seven sections, and each one will narrate seven important moments of the life of the Jewish community in Thessaloniki, starting in 1910 and ending in 1965. We have the Thessaloniki Film Festival, the National Opera, uh, and the New Museum, MoMAS, have uh, assigned this to Silas Dumarkas and Christos Pasalis, with a wonderful cast such as uh, Mrs. Bazaka, Mrs. Papapulia, etc., and they will be bringing this project to fruition. Uh, it will be screened uh, like a film, but since each episode is uh, independent of the others, it will also be presented as an original video installation at the National Opera House, firstly, and then we hope other in other museums, maybe it will also um, be a permanent feature at the Museum of Thessaloniki and in other museums uh, with which we are in contact. So we had a great help and influence from Mr. Mazao's book on doing this, and I'd like to thank him with this opportunity. His book truly inspired us. Uh, and also Mr. Zumerkas, Mr. Pasalis, and myself in revisiting the ghosts which have been left behind, which still exist, which are gone, and the way they have affected us. Because the second uh, particular feature of this plan, which has the title Ipoli, Ke Ipoli, is that all actors and actresses will wear the period costumes of 1910, during the occupation, the Germans will wear their uniforms, uh, will be um, uh, shot of the, the Black Saturday in Eleftheria Square. So we will not, ch but we will not change Thessaloniki from the way it looks today. We'll see the ghosts of the past, uh, the Christians, the Jews, uh, the um, Germans walking around the city as we know it. These wounds, uh, these points in history are still open and uh, 
we uh, want to um, address this issue. We will also be soon celebrating 200 years since the uh, Greek uprising. And I believe that the uh, Greek identity uh, is also shaped through the traumas of, uh, modern, of the country's modern history. Um, Mr. Andrea Drakis, uh, I would also like to discuss the next step uh, later on, the, that is after we learn our history, how we take the next step and how we address it. Well, uh, I met uh, Mr. Mazauer uh, for the first time when he was pre presenting his book in Olympion Cinema uh, with the title A City of Ghosts and uh, an argument started uh, by Mr. Zuraris who was uh, against the book uh, and voiced very strong opinions. I was, uh, I had always been close to the Jewish community of Thessaloniki, and actually my father worked with some uh, Jewish traders. And the book, uh, this book, was actually uh, the uh, spark uh, for me to start looking at the Holocaust, the Jewish presence in the city, and all related subjects. Thank you very much, Mark. Κατά πόσο σε όλη αυτή τη συζήτηση που έχουμε ανοίξει εσωτερικά επηρεαζόμαστε και, το, και από το πώς ανοίγει η συζήτηση για τη δική μας ιστορία διεθνώς. So the question is about us being impacted on. However, since uh, Mr. Andreadakis brought this up. After all, it's, it's on our poster. It's the last thing we mention in that paragraph of ours. Many times, uh, the international uh, press draws a parallel between Thessaloniki and Barcelona. Thessaloniki has also been called the New Berlin. I would not like to uh, dwell on the common points or on the differences that these cities share. We can agree or disagree. I'd rather say However, that these two cities have been totally different all along, and their respective uh, histories are very, very imposing. So the question is how can Thessaloniki manage its own history and how this can strengthen Thessaloniki and Greece. I would like to start with you, Mrs. Kavala, and then I will give the floor to Mr. Mazauer. These are huge question marks indeed. History helps us approach the past and understand it to the extent that it is possible. Society, economy and culture are always there. The memory of the city is omnipresent. So this can be an input for Thessaloniki's memory. We have to be respectful to the dead. We have to be responsible vis-a-vis -vis what 
other generations did. I don't know to what extent it's possible for us to avert difficult behaviors of previous times. I think we should be assisted in approaching and understanding and finding unifying elements. The different uh, facets of the history of a place do generate wealth. Indeed, 96% of Thessaloniki's Jewish population was lost due to the Nazis, due to uh, passive indifference. Uh, there were uh, Nazi collaborators, of course, yes. And after uh, the civil wars, a very difficult period ensued. Uh, people that were freedom uh, fighters uh, found themselves behind bars. Mr. Mazauer. Perhaps uh, we uh, shouldn't be burdening uh, historic conscience uh, with something it cannot bear. Let me elaborate. If we want, we can have this discussion with our fellow citizens, with our past, with our sources. Our historic conscience can be inward looking or look for experiences in other histories. For several years, Greek historians dealt with the Jewish history as, as a menace for the history of Thessaloniki. Being able to study uh, the city's uh, Jewish uh, history is going to enrich our knowledge of uh, Thessaloniki's Greek history. I am glad that we are speaking about uh, the Jews tonight, but Thessaloniki used to be an Ottoman city for very long. And uh, someone has already spoken about this relationship between Istanbul and Thessaloniki, and that's, that's very important. Uh, we, we usually miss that point, but it was so important for several centuries. and. Uh, Nowadays in Greece, uh, not in schools, but in universities, uh, we have a complete refurbishment, as it were, of Ottoman studies. Uh, Thessaloniki was an Ottoman and a Greek city at the same time. In that sense, historic uh, conscience can have its own uh, input to this more general uh, cultural discussion about Thessaloniki. Scientific research is not influenced by what goes on on the social or on the political level. In politics, however, uh, Mr. Butaris' uh, social impact is always important. Do you think that the international and European discussion about this did have a role to play? I 
I have always believed that if uh, one is not aware of their past, they cannot build their future. We are now slowly uh, discovering our past because other than uh, the Roman and the Hellenistic uh, parts of it, we also have our Byzantine uh, part, past which is huge. Uh, we don't know about our Ottoman uh, past. We just know about those uh, relics of the Ottoman paths. Thessaloniki used to have 35 synagogues and now it has only one. And uh, during the war, it served as a Red Cross uh, warehouse. This is why the uh, Germans, the Germans did not bring it down. For several years, Thessaloniki did not want uh, to deal uh, with uh, this kind of past for several reasons that I will not go into right now. On March 15th, uh, we hold our memory march each year. We wanted to honor the survivors, and the university did not have a uh, monument, given that this is uh, where one of Europe's uh, biggest and oldest uh, Jewish cemeteries uh, was located. And of course, uh, the Germans, uh, together with uh, uh, their uh, collaborators, the uh, Greek authorities, decided to dissolve that uh, cemetery. And in the very uh, yard of St. Uh, Demetrius, uh, church, you would find tombstones from the uh, Jewish uh, cemetery uh, throughout. Of course, Israel is of course, uh, Israel is uh, strongly backed by the United States. And this is why you have so many people turning against everything that is Jewish. And this is so for the whole world. And there's another very uh, prominent uh, trait about the Jews is that they, they stand together, they, they support each other. The Jewish diaspora is the strongest uh, lobby in the United States. And, uh, this is why everybody else is so jealous of them. The Greek diaspora, for example, is uh, jealous of them uh, because they stand together so, so closely. I try to find out about their know-how, but I, I was not successful. Such things are not up for sale, as you can understand. Mr. Andreadakis, I see that uh, you are uh, noting heavily, but uh, a short while from now, uh, Mr. Mazawar will have to leave us because uh, he has a flight to catch. So if anyone has a question, please, if you have a question for Mr. Mazawar, please uh, raise your hand and we will bring you the microphone. As to whether Thessaloniki is the new Barcelona or the new Berlin, I would not want to see that. I would just like Thessaloniki to become the new Thessaloniki, an open city, a city that would be a crossroads for uh, tourism, for the economy, for culture. I would like Thessaloniki to be uh, daring enough in order to manage its traumas and its ghosts in order to be able to discover an exciting future. That would make it better than Berlin or Barcelona. Thank you. I have one more question. 
the Macedonian uh, issue uh, came to uh, the fore for some time now, and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia has now changed its name to the Republic of uh, Northern Macedonia. Many people feel that uh, the Prespes Agreement opened the uh, Pandora's box. Other feel that others feel that this is the best thing that uh, Greece could achieve. In any case, only few people tried to approach this issue. not in a hot-headed way. Everything has been said in the public domain by now. Still, I would like all of you to tell us where you stand about the role of Thessaloniki in the Balkans. Many Greek companies have relocated to neighboring area, neighboring countries. Tourists arriving in Thessaloniki and in Chalkidiki come mainly from the Balkans. What do you think? The Macedonian issue is with us for 300 or 400 years now. I am absolutely aware of that because all of the uh, neighboring villages of my home village used to be uh, called uh, Bulgarian villages by the elders, and uh, their language was called uh, Macedonian or Slav Macedonian by those people. Long before 1999, they would go to Monastir or Gevgelia without being subject to any controls, and the relations were very good. In the last three or Four years, more than one million uh, people uh, carrying uh, North Macedonian passports uh, travel to uh, the greater the greater area of Thessaloniki. They go to uh, uh, Platamonas and Asprovalta. The Bulgarians choose the island of Thassos. Due to political exploitation, we suffered for 30 years. We were not able to understand what was going on in the rest of the world, and the rest of the world just could not understand what the problem was. They could not understand uh, why it was that I should feel offended if they call themselves Macedonians. The fact that a country uh, was obliged to change its name, to change its constitution without a war. And this was also uh, redeeming for uh, uh, Greece's dignity in the international fora. I'm not calling this a government success. We obeyed to the orders of the Germans and the Americans because there was no way this issue would be brought to a close otherwise. And we know that Russian money uh, went into the neighboring country because the Russians, and to a certain extent the Turks as well, did not want uh, the matter to be resolved. But you also had those people dressing up like uh, Alexander uh, the Great on his horse to participate 
in uh, protest demonstrations, but there are financial benefits behind all that. And uh, where did they all go? You don't see them around anymore. In a deal, some things you win, some, th some, th some things you lose. As to commercial names and trademarks, about 15 uh, years ago, I was the president of the uh, Winemakers Association, and uh, we were working on uh, local wines to make sure that our wines could be called uh, uh, local wine of Macedonia, local wine of Crete, etc. All those uh, files were submitted to the European Union, and all that was turned into European law. Three or four months lapsed, and uh, clients from uh, Germany uh, told us that uh, there were uh, wines uh, circulating with uh, the name of Macedonian uh, wine. Uh, we resorted to legal uh, remedies, and uh, those wines were taken off the shelves immediately. Uh, there are people saying that uh, we sold off, we sold off uh, Macedonia. Come on, come on. Okay, I will now pass the floor to Mr. Andreadakis first, but please try and keep it as short as possible because Mr. Mazar has to go. The uh, Thessaloniki Film Festival uh, does believe in local cooperation and a large part of our festival is active in uh, southeastern Europe and in the southeastern Mediterranean. This, air, this area starts from uh, the Danube and uh, it goes all the way from the Adriatic uh, Sea to uh, the mouth of River Nile. Hellenism is a very uh, strong part of this area. This is, uh, the, uh, this is our favorite area. We have uh, directors, producers, and actors from this area. And this is how we manage to uh, uh, go uh, beyond uh, uh, conflicts and intolerance. I will be very short. This is a huge issue which we shouldn't attempt to solve here. And of course, it has been exhausted, really. I agree with uh, Yanis Boutaris. Let me just point out that on a political level, we will have to wait for 10 or 20 years uh, more. This is why some of us are more skeptical. Number two, I think most people uh, were annoyed, and I was annoyed uh, because of uh, history as well as on a sentimental level. I also uh, fully share what Mr. Mazawar said about historic uh, conscience. I was there uh, when Mr. Mazawar presented his book here in Thessaloniki when a foreigner, a non-Thessalonian, dealt with our history in this way. This, of course, does not mean that academia did not play a role. I think, however, that Mr. Mazar was a catalyst. In a strange kind of way, we managed to communicate there's also the mythology of our city. We tend to forget about the myth of Thessaloniki. And 
the myth, the mist of this myth revolves all around it. The Lidis and Elenikos uh, Voras uh, business groups uh, were very much instrumental. Plus the poets of Thessaloniki. It was mainly through uh, poetry and literature and film to a certain extent that we got to learn about those things. Uh, theater productions and film productions are not what we would love to see, quantitatively speaking, uh, whereas we have so many things in the field of, of music. I'm sorry to say this because I work in, in theater and in cinema. I'm just an amateur lover of, of history, of music. This kind of uh, mythology is based on things that are not that well known. Mrs. Kavala. I, too, agree to a great extent with this agreement. We have a very rich literature about the Macedonian issue, and everybody is welcome to, to study it. The literature sources are there, and geostrategically speaking, it's important for us to have countries that we can work harmoniously with along our northern borders. Mr. Mazauer, what do you think about the potential of Thessaloniki as regards the Balkans or beyond the Balkans? I think it's not up to me to comment. I'm very glad to see that a solution was found to the Macedonian issue. Sorry to interrupt. My question is not about the agreement in Macedonia. My question is about the geographical location of Thessaloniki and the role that Thessaloniki can play in the Balkans. Let's take the port, for example. The change of name of our neighboring country, of course, is very important. As to the port, other people are much better placed than me to comment. In the past, Thessaloniki formed part of the Ottoman economy, which was a Balkan uh, economy. And back then, it played a very important role. And let's hope that Thessaloniki is going to do this again. Let me now refer to the relation between uh, Thessaloniki and uh, northeastern Greece. Many times I have the feeling that the relation between Thessaloniki and Xanthi, for example, or Thessaloniki and Komotini, or Thessaloniki and Alexandrupoli, can grow uh, further. Thank you very much for your input and your participation in our debate, Mr. Mazauer. Is there a question? If you could just wait a couple of minutes. A question for Mr. Mazauer. 
In a few years, we'll be uh, celebrating 200 years uh, since the Greek uprising. And there has been a great debate about the uh, continuity or discontinuity of Hellenism. Uh, what about the role of Thessaloniki, which has had a continuous historical identity through time? What role can it play regarding this debate about the continuity or discontinuity of Hellenism, which is uh, ongoing um, because of the celebrations for the 200 years since the Greek uprising, which will be taking place in 2021? Thank you very much. Uh, this is a very important question indeed. It is not uh, only difficult, it is impossible to give a quick answer on this. I believe that uh, both uh, here and in Greece, uh, we are now uh, at the uh, beginning of a very extensive debate about the significance of, 20, of 1821, uh, not only in Thessaloniki in Greece, but generally speaking. Due to the lack of time, I can say this only. The whole history of the Greek uprising is uh, simultaneously a history of a great success the liberation of Peloponnese and the other regions of uh, the f First Kingdom of Greece. And a failure, however, at the same time, because uh, it was a failure vis-a-vis -vis all other regions of the Ottoman Empire uh, that were inhabited by Greeks and uh, other communities and which remained under the Ottoman rule. History must include both cases. And the question is, what were the reasons uh, that uh, there was a different result for the city of Thessaloniki? Did it have to do with the uh, developments that followed? There was a, a slaughtering in Thessaloniki, but uh, that was not the end of the city's history under the Ottoman rule. But this is a major issue that uh, needs to be further discussed. Thank you very much for your input, Ms. Mazaur. I would also like to thank you, and I wish you all the best. I'd like to make a comment on this uh, issue, if I can. I'm not going to uh, comment on the historical or political uh, aspects of the issue of the PRESPA agreement. Since uh, the agreement has brought a certain chapter of history to completion, the question is how we can also uh, take advantage of our northern uh, neighbors. Uh, because we always assume that uh, our neighboring countries and ecosystems are uh, similar to ours or, or the same as ours. Uh, through um, Okay, Thess, we have been trying to approach uh, business people and investment capital representatives uh, to bring them into contact with the Greek reality and bring them into contact with Greek uh, business people so that we have co-financing uh, and uh, synergies in order to develop this uh, whole ecosystem as one. If we view the Balkans as a single market, then uh, there are many prospects opening up uh, because we tend to, to uh, confine ourselves to the Saloniki and see no uh, way, room for expansion, both in the field of tourism and elsewhere. So, uh, viewing uh, Sofia as a different market or uh, Skopje as a different market where uh, Greek uh, business people can actually uh, be active and expand their activities in that direction is a very important prospect and vice versa. Balkan companies can find an outlet via uh, uh, the port of Thessaloniki and the business um, environment that has been developed in the city. So uh, with regard to entrepreneurship and the business community, I think it's very important to put politics aside for the time being and see how we can uh, move forward with uh, partnerships and um, take substantial steps for the future. And I move to the uh, field of uh, culture because uh, then we will go back to the uh, plans for the development of the city. Mr. Andreadakis, I'd like to ask you to what extent an institution uh, 
like the Thessaloniki International Film Festival, the Documentary Festival, can play a role in the overall extroversion of the city in a structured manner and constitute in itself a pillar of this extroversion that can attract international interest to the city. Well, uh, you want me to answer. I think people should answer this rather than myself. Yes, but uh, you could also uh, possibly talk about the challenges that the festival has faced and uh, gone through. Yeah, my question is, how do people feel this? Do they get this feeling that the Thessaloniki International Film Festival helps the student community, for example, to uh, open new windows to the world? Does it indeed help the city's trade because of people coming to the city, visiting the city, and advertising it around the world? I have spoken, I continuously talk to institutional bodies in the city, cultural, uh, business related, uh, academic, etc. And they tell me that this is true. But I'd like uh, to ask uh, the people here if they agree. In my opinion, the film festival does help and can play a significant role. Boudaris at one point told me that the brand name uh, Thessaloniki uh, was uh, really uh, helped uh, by the fact that the Thessaloniki Film Festival became an international film festival and that this had a major impact on the city's brand name. And uh, with this opportunity, may I remind the audience that they can address any question to the speakers. Something else that uh, Mr. Michaelis uh, mentioned uh, had to do with uh, the extent to which uh, we, as Greeks, uh, have a, a significant presence in the world of cinema. So it's important for you to uh, potentially speak about a more invisible part of the festival, the Agora. Uh, section uh, where there is the uh, opportunity for um, partnerships, uh, uh, synergies and partnerships uh, also seem to be a, uh, something we're not accustomed to. The Thessaloniki International Film Festival shows uh, particularly uh, mainly independent films uh, which are uh, less commercial. Uh, le experimental movies that maybe have a smaller audience um, share. But the mo a very important part of the Thessaloniki International Film Festival is the uh, Agora uh, section and the market, uh, generally speaking, because we need this in order to mobilize uh, the um, cultural uh, elements of um, the city because uh, the Agora uh, section of the festival helps people find financing from every corner of the world for their efforts. And in this, I would like to thank, uh, rather to seek the support and the help of the business community of Thessaloniki in order to uh, move uh, the festival one step further. Uh, Mr. Michailidis, what about the uh, uh, cultural side of uh, the city? Uh, the Thessaloniki International Film Festival is very popular indeed, and uh, I think that it is dearly loved. Maybe we need to have uh, more uh, activity in the field of uh, production of films. Uh, and this also has to do with the culture and education uh, on uh, cinema and theater. We have uh, two departments at the university that were established in recent years, but I think that's not enough. There were ways of uh, uh, evolving. Why not have a festival of drama, also a festival of um, jazz music, for example, or classical music? Because uh, Thessaloniki has played a, a major role in this as well. And I'm not simply talking about the, the academic side of this debate. Uh, 
festivals uh, create uh, their own audience. Uh, Thessaloniki needs to educate its audience in order for it to become more extroverted and outward looking. And all this, of course, is linked to economic growth, etc., etc. Uh, money may be needed to all of, for all of this, but it is less than the money it will attract because this is a two way interaction. And that's where we're lagging behind slightly at the moment. Uh, I think this is the direction to follow in order to do away with our introversion, which is indeed uh, something that is drawing us back. So uh, introversion is a, an issue that you have all touched upon in one way or another. We have a question. OK, please could you uh, let us know when people have questions, and then uh, give the floor to the first row. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are speaking about the Saloniki, and this is very important indeed. And I don't know if what I'm going to say is a question, but rather a concern, because I think that in order for a question to be raised, one has to ask something. I am nearly 40. I was born in Thessaloniki. Uh, my family originates from Thrace, from the area of Pontus. And all that we are discussing is very interesting indeed. But as a young person living in this city, I think that uh, in order to uh, ask a specific question, there needs to be a basis uh, for this. Uh, and Mr. Mikhailidis spoke about education. I see that we are lagging greatly behind in this uh, when I look at the uh, at my family and the children, nephews, etc. We want to talk about the Thessaloniki we want. We, of course, we need to be aware of its history. The question is, what do we learn in uh, our history um, lessons? Uh, at what age do, are we taught correctly? Because uh, individually speaking, uh, each person may be interested in uh, a specific thing that concerns them. But if we don't have a general effort in the field of education, then we will not be able to speak about the identity of the Saloniki in the future, because people will not be aware of it. There needs to be a continuity. And that's what you talked about earlier. But in order to uh, ensure that this is the case, then in our mentality, in our educational system, in uh, our introversion, a lot needs to be done. Uh, so this is a rather a comment, rather a question. But in order for a person to um, add to his city, to its civilization, they need to have the relevant space and daily life and uh, the right uh, conditions. Um, so if the Greek people, who are so great, uh, cannot do all this, uh, then we see that uh, the Greek identity is deconstructed. Uh, and how can we speak about the uh, Greek identity and the identity of the city tomorrow if we cannot really uh, look after it today? and pay, the atten pay it the attention it deserves. Good evening. I have three questions for the panel regarding the musical scene in Thessaloniki. As Mr. Mikhailidis said, we need an emblematic music festival in the city which could uh, turn it into a tourist destination, not just have amateur groups, but also bring tourists to the city. Also, there are not enough spaces for amateur bands to play. There's no such place now. Milos uh, used to exist. Uh, now it's uh, outdated. Uh, and that area is also uh, the reason why it's called the neurotic city. So. Uh, people create um, art in Thessaloniki, but then they leave and go elsewhere. We need to retain our musical heritage uh, because the music that we produce here has uh, nothing to envy with regard to what is done elsewhere in Europe. I don't know who would like to make a comment or an an give an answer. Well, I'd like to say something in relation to the first comment. Generally speaking, I agree with you. Uh, times are hard, particularly for the younger generation, and this is a fact. And uh, I think uh, the fallen generations feel much more disappointed than we do. We grew up with a certain degree of optimism that things are will turn out okay. I think now younger people feel that there's no hope. 
Uh, this is slowly being reversed, but uh, people still think that things are hard and uh, there's not much that can be done. Uh, there are three types of people, in my opinion. It has to do with the education of youth, people who wait for things to come to them because they deserve them, because that's the way it should be, people who fight, on the other hand, in order to get what they deserve is another category. And we see around us, uh, even today, many young people who uh, do wonderful things. They were participating in volunteer groups, uh, they work hard, and this fills them with experience, knowledge, and uh, uh, different experiences. And this is very important for their future life. There are many opportunities uh, for people to uh, develop themselves in the city and to be creative, uh, first as a volunteer, and then see how they can uh, move uh, further in that direction. We need to train and educate our children uh, in the fact that they can uh, um, gain knowledge, experience, and skills um, through their own efforts. Uh, and I don't think that we need to be concerned about the way in which the future generations will um, develop. Uh, allow me to say something as well, because I'm listening to what you say with great attention, and we will get to know also some people later on who have um, been embraced by OK Thess. However, I believe that this um, test with regard to history, to the city's history, uh, is, uh, cannot be addressed only by being optimistic, willing, innovative, uh, um, and daring. I mean, uh, what was just mentioned about education, which is a very important pillar of society as well as health, uh, and we shall see later on. Uh, the, the, what the situation is in relation to this, because we're talking about an ideal future when we haven't even agreed on uh, what we're going to do about our past. We don't even know how to address our past in order to uh, view the present and envisage the future. Mr. Zafiriu, who is also here, will soon be talking about this. Uh, we're talking about city and its history, uh, about the fact that the Saloniki is a general point of reference for northern Greece, but nevertheless, there's no pediatric clinic in the city. We talk about the ideal, but sometimes you don't look at uh, basic facts and what is right before our eyes. So I think the field of education which encompasses uh, the element of history is something absolutely essential uh, also for the business development of the city and the economy. What I would like to touch upon is the fact that uh, we all have our own personal share of responsibility for education. For example, we have the popular university of uh, the municipality of Thessaloniki, where people can participate for free and attend uh, lectures of uh, university professors, which have to do with issues around the world of medicine, uh, culture, history, etc. So it's our personal responsibility as well. Public education, of course, is another uh, field that we need to pay great attention to, but each parent and each one of us uh, on a personal basis also need to educate ourselves and uh, to be uh, accountable as regards uh, issues related to history or any other sector. So. I think that we can find people around us uh, in every uh, field of interest and uh, talk to them and learn things, maybe in a more unconventional way, but uh, nevertheless opportunities do exist. Yes, I do agree with you fully. Now Mr. Butaris' uh, comment. Yes, I do agree uh, with regard to the comment on uh, education. However, in a country where uh, it is tolerated for teachers to have uh, trade union elections on a school day. All trade unions around the world do their elections at the weekend. Teachers have their elections on Thursday. And that's it. And no one reacts against this. 
And secondly, we have a university where you see a teacher's notice that says the examinations uh, will cover the material from page uh, 5 to page 25. Uh, and you ask ourselves, is there any future for this country after all in the field of education? You need to have explosions in the educational field in Greece, otherwise there is no future. Uh, let me take up a little more of your time. What do we learn in our history lesson? The industry of the, Salon the industrial world of Thessaloniki began to develop in the early 20th century, and this was a great innovation for the city. Okay, Thess, what does it do? It uh, shows the seed for innovation. And at the same time, and this is very important indeed, our country, in our country rather, after the war, People uh, were given the impression that it was bad to get involved in the world of business. And anyone who disagrees with me, please raise your hand. We are the last country uh, with a Soviet perception. We want the state to do everything for us. Well, let me tell you, the municipality will do nothing. We simply open our doors for you to take action. There can be no other way. So, you go to universities abroad and really feel hurt. What do we learn from our history? Well, we have OKFES, which opens up many opportunities, and they have three great assets in Thessaloniki uh, to take advantage of. It's uh, the culture of the city from the period of time of Alexander the Great to the present. The second asset of the city is its universities, its academic institutions. The, the field of humanities uh, can be developed uh, to the utmost. Uh, industry is dead. It can uh, compete no further with rivals such as China and other Asian countries. And third and foremost, the third major asset of the city are its agricultural Goods. The agriculture products of the valleys of Thessaloniki, of uh, Chalkidiki, etc., uh, involve uh, extreme wealth. I went to Holland once, and I saw that in uh, the in a desert they had hydroponic tomatoes. In Sweden, I ate jet fresh. Strawberries. I thought it was a variety of strawberry, and he told me no. Jet fresh means that they're uh, cut uh, off the plant uh, in the morning in Israel. They're sent to Stockholm, and we can eat them at lunchtime. Just imagine that. We dominated the market in the field of fruit and vegetables, and now there's not a single Greek fruit left. Why? So, let us not dream of the industry. Let us invest in technology and education. And let people uh, come to this um, conclusion. Uh, all parents want their kids to go to the university and get a job in civil services, and that's it. Well, stop uh, the permanent status of uh, civil servant uh, jobs. Why don't you retain this uh, at top levels and then have performance evaluation once a year? And if people are no good, then they have to leave. They can do something else. I'm sorry I'm so cynical, but I'm really up to here with this situation. Yes, but let me say that for specific historical and geopolitical reasons, Thessaloniki must undertake the role of being the city of friendship of the peoples. And we need a constant uh, Greek, Turkish, and Israeli cooperation in order to create this vision of friendship. We lived here all together for centuries, and we can inspire the world uh, for a better future. Mr. Mestikidis, a question over here as well. I don't have a question, it's a comment rather, because I've been listening to this discussion for quite long, and I'd like to um, mention this. 
I feel like we're looking at a cancer patient and we're talking about the fact that he has an ingrown toenail. We are in a city that is experiencing extreme racism, extreme uh, religious fundamentalism, extreme uh, sexism, and we're talking about whether we need to develop its business identity or not. The main thing affecting Thessaloniki right now is the fact that it could never create a decent, um, let's say, uh, average profile uh, that would um, characterize the whole city. If you walk from the east to the west of the city, it's like you're in different worlds. Uh, who is interested in the areas of the Derbotamos, for example, about the Saloniki International Film Festival, where Golden Dawn was uh, gaining ground in recent years in their elections? We need uh, the city's identity to change. This cannot be done either through excellence or business opportunities. It needs to be done through culture. We need to create this uh, decent, this dignified, mean uh, identity. Uh, that will um, characterize the whole city and then talk about the details. The Thessaloniki International Film Festival is, of course, so important for the city, but how many people uh, are affected by it? In general uh, terms, uh, let me uh, try and understand your frame of mind. However, I don't believe that the Saloniki has extreme racism, extreme fundamentalism, and the, everything to the extreme. Do you live here? Yes, of course. Have you been to Oreokostro, for example? Yes, there are certain phenomena, but you see these in many parts of Greece. There is an overall rise of um, such extreme phenomena and ideologies all over Europe. And these are very dangerous, of course. We see the situation in uh, Hungary, in Paris, in uh, France, in the cradle of uh, French Enlightenment. However, although these phenomena are very dangerous, I don't think that they are particularly uh, worrisome in the city of Thessaloniki. I think uh, they are similar to the situation around the world. The, the, well, this is uh, no uh, solace. It isn't, but we cannot say that Thessaloniki is extreme in all these aspects, maybe even less than other regions, such as regional areas around Paris, where things are tragic, or countries such as Hungary, Poland, Italy also, right next door. I was there a few days ago at the Festival of Venice, and I saw and spoke and met people, normal people, who spoke to me in fascist language, people who went to the cinema, watched wonderful films, and I thought, is it possible that they live amongst us, or are we living amongst them? The Thessaloniki International Festival, Momos, the State Theatre of Northern Greece, the uh, Conservatoire, the um, Music Hall, yes. Maybe they do not concern all of Thessaloniki and its provinces, and there may be people who consider all this to be a luxury, but that is precisely the luxury of culture. And that is what we need to invest in. And that's where we all have a significant role to play, although we have already taken major steps. At the festival, we have an increase of 10% with regard to uh, people Oh, um, coming to our uh, screenings. And we see this in all other institutions as well. The uh, effect that all these cultural bodies have now on the city of Thessaloniki is very important indeed. But if you have ideas about how we can improve our approach and uh, have a greater impact on the city of Thessaloniki, our doors are always open, as well as the doors of all other cultural institutions, and your help, everybody's help, is very useful indeed. Yes, that's what I wanted to end up with, the, the fact that culture can save the day. But there needs to be some supervision with regard to mass uh, cultural events. I think that this needs to become more open makes people more op make people more open to what is foreign to have people with open ears to be tolerant of people next to them 
because what we say about introversion is true. If you see the cultural events taking place in a regional, in um, province, in uh, di certain districts of the city, you see that they are funny uh, or even dangerous, uh, focusing mainly on the folk element, folkloric element. Talking about the um, initiatives in this field uh, and the relevant incidents that took place uh, within this framework in the past, I think that uh, we need to have a solid knowledge of our history in order to know ourselves and to know what we represent either in the field of politics, business, culture, etc., and uh, take action. What I wanted to ask, and I will also come to your question, sir. There are many questions, but we need to uh, hurry up. Please try to ask quick questions. Since uh, we are speaking about culture for such a long time, Mrs. Crescido, would you like to make a comment? Well, I uh, did not intend to make any comment, actually, or stop the dialogue. However, from what I hear from the panel or from yourselves, I think I need to make an intervention. Dimitris, my opinion is that the Andromotropos is never going to come to the film festival. The Andromotropos is never going to go to the events taking place at the music hall or elsewhere. What does that mean? Do you want to explain to us? But I don't know if that is of interest to us at the end of the day, whether the district of Andropodomos will visit the music hall in the general sense of the world of the Thessaloniki Film Festival. The question is how in the Andropodomos, and that is a question of political will, how you can help the Andropodomos to gain its own identity and Stavropolis to gain its own dynamic presence through its own particular features. And that's a question of politics, and politics um, I'll take the decision about uh, whether to organize a lifestyle concerts or um, show have plays or etc etc of this kind or whether they will get involved in something else those who are involved in the culture oil field cannot make interventions of this kind or uh, the way in which uh, history will be introduced in the educational system and how young people will uh, learn about their history this is a question that concerns others we have uh, the local uh, initiatives, OK Fest, the festivals, the Open University, trying to bring all artists in contact with the public. But what the general, uh, what is uh, dictated on a general political level and has to do with education, etc., and culture is totally different to the role of the local administration. However, what we can say is, and I want to say this, I've been working in the municipality for eight years, and we really fought hard to do some things. And what I can say today is that Thessaloniki had and has a very uh, strong potential in the field of culture. The question is not to organize festivals, but to uh, enable other people to organize festivals. We do have large-scale festivals here at Glis. The Thessaloniki International Fe Festival is known to all. We have the Reworks Festival as well, however, which is a mu music that is not Greek, something different. But these young people nevertheless managed to organize a very important festival for the city. Can we support them? Where are the journalists and the local media in order for this to become known in the rest of the city and abroad? They're not there. If something is missing from the city, because we do have the people working in the field of culture, we have groups, we have creative people, we have the relevant cultural bodies, but what we don't have is a central policy and in regional areas as well. Sorry, could you just be brief? Yes. We don't have the people who can promote all this 
within a general planning for the uh, city's cultural landscape. Thank you very much, and sorry for taking up too much of your time. Please be brief, because uh, we're running out of time. The gentleman over there has been waiting for a long time, and then you, you, and you. Four questions in order to move forward with this uh, debate. I'm a young man myself, born and bred here in Thessaloniki. It's indeed important to get to know history. Mr. Boutaris was right. There are historical landmarks that we do not know about. But in order for us to uh, turn culture and history to good account, Functionality is important. Is our historical center functional for us and for tourists alike? Thessaloniki is not a functional city. This is very problematic. The Reworks Festival is a 15-year-old uh, festival that is not promoted the way it should be. Although it does attract young people and tourists as well. I have a final thing I'd like to put to Mr. Boutaris about the uh, Prespes Agreement. You said something about give and take, but what Greece lost was language and citizenship. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Good evening. My conclusion from our discussion up till now is that uh, Thessaloniki, Thessaloniki is a miniature of uh, Greek uh, social and provincial problems. We are about to celebrate the 200 years of our state that is a centralist one. My name is Nikos Lavrianos. I'm a journalist. I am 50 years old. I won't take up much of your time because my friend Dimitris Safiriou is going to take the floor. And it is thanks to him that I got to learn about uh, the police or the uh, super trump, those music bands. As to functionality, brand names are excellent things to have. Other than the Balkans and Eastern Europe, uh, we also we are also a crossroads, cross, a crossroads for the Turks and the Arabs. But it's a contradictory relationship. We are in love with the city, but we are hating it at the same time. Right. I have a question here before me that reads as follows. Let's focus on the present and the future. I think everything blends in. Unfortunately, we don't know our past. I've been to most places of the world, and maybe our city is the most vandalized urban fabric. I mean, I mean, does anyone know about uh, the steely of snakes? It, it's just a piece of uh, marble that is uh, dumped somewhere at the western entrance of Thessaloniki. 
What's going to happen with Skopje and Northern Macedonia is not the most imperative issue. Local government and the central government are accountable. Maybe Thessaloniki is Greece's dirtiest and most dysfunctional city. Thessaloniki is a dead-end city. I have Cretan ancestors myself. Uh, Mr. Andreadakis spoke about uh, Crete. Heraklion used to be thought of as uh, a Cretan black hole, and whenever I traveled from Thessaloniki to Heraklion, I remember thinking about Kurupitos, the landfill of Heraklion. Έλεγα λοιπόν ότι Ηράκλειο και Θεσσαλονίκη, και ενώ υπήρξαν και οι δύο Ολυμπιακέ πόλει, ακολούθησαν αντίστροφα. Both of these uh, cities were Olympic cities. 25 years later, I'm so glad to travel to Ηράκλειο. Their urban landscape has improved greatly, contrary to Θεσσαλονίκη. I had to bike for 30 minutes to get here. This is the only public transport medium that we have in this regard. The uh, festival, we have two music halls here in Thessaloniki. The second one was completed in the times of uh, crisis. And all of a sudden, they were devoid of spectacles because 80% of spectacles and events take place at the port and in the Olympian building. So why can't we open up to the western area of Thessaloniki? Thank you for your patience. As far as we are concerned, we opted for this place because it is a landmark. We liked it. And it is in downtown Thessaloniki. Is it not? Is it not? Is it? Επειδή βλέπω ότι δεν είναι κέντρο, γι' αυτό. Λοιπόν, θέλω, θέλω... Ε, μέχρι και εγώ που είμαι από την Αθήνα το αντιλαμβάνομαι αυτό, ότι μέχρι πιο κέντρο δεν έχει από τη Θεσσαλονίκη, αλλά βλέπω αντίθετες από όσο διατυπώνονται. Ε, oh. Εγώ κρατώ well, I'm, I'm from Athens. στις τρεις παρεμβάσεις. Θέλω Three more people are going to take the floor. I will, before that, I will give the floor to two more speakers, and then uh, we will wrap this up because we have to give some time to Christos Exarchopoulos and to the folks, uh, Mr. Focas's band. I will now pass the floor to Mrs. Sari. Για να μα πείτε με δύο λέξει για ποιο λόγο, αν μπορείτε να σηκωθείτε. Ευχαριστούμε. Για ποιο λόγο, καλησπέρα σα. Good evening. Για ποιο λόγο, τι κάνετε, ποιοι είστε και. Could you briefly tell us who you are, what you do, and whether someone can be innovative and daring in Thessaloniki? Θα συγκεντρώνονται όλα αυτά τα χαρακτηριστικά, οπότε ο λόγο σε εσά. Λίγο πιο κοντά το μικρόφωνο, να σα ακούνε όλοι. Undoubtedly, young people can be innovative. I agree with Mrs. Tiamanda. If your mind is set on doing something, there is a way. Myself and Mrs. Andrianaki are architects, and we've created an urban game. Some of our university professors thought of it as non-substantive, but we found out that many inhabitants find it interesting. It's an urban tool, actually, as well as a 
way to make it easier for people to get involved. We had we started off from a simple plain idea. Groups like OKFES have been very much supportive. Uh, we knew nothing about market needs and competitors in the beginning. So if you have a nice idea, there are many things that you can do. Are you from Thessaloniki? I am from Chalkidiki. I live here for very long. Born and bred? I only studied abroad for six months in, in Germany. Did you look for other opportunities there? Well, no. And you're always based in Thessaloniki? Yes. I did think about leaving, but after having been to many cultural festivals, I saw that everybody advised me not to, not to leave Thessaloniki. And they were right. Thank you, Mrs. Sari. Mr. Nicolaou, we will be wrapping up in a few minutes from now. Just give me two minutes, Mr. Mutais. Our name is Shifting Our City. You can... You can find us on Facebook. Mr. Nicolaou? Taylor made therapy, υπάρχει και εδώ. Υπάρχει. Τώρα τελευταία να πω λίγο να κάνω μια μικρή εισαγωγή για να με καταλαβαίνουν και οι παρευρισκόμενοι. Εγώ είμαι ψυχίατρο. I'm a psychiatrist. Έχω φτιάξει, έχω σχεδιάσει ένα online εργαλείο. And I have designed an online tool enabling the user to choose the adequate therapy depending on their problem. I've lived in Thessaloniki, I've been living in Thessaloniki for 20 years. I'm from Athens for personal reasons, personal and professional reasons. But I think of Thessaloniki as my new home. I came here to talk about the productive potential of Thessaloniki. Would you recommend to someone from Athens to come here? Well, yes, I would. Thessaloniki is a pretty human city, uh, despite its problems. And, of course, there is great room for improvement, but life here is more human, more decent. Many more things will need to be done, of course. Maybe in Thessaloniki and in Greece in general, we tend to forget about personal responsibility. All is well and fine, but we just sit and wait for uh, money, jobs, and festivals to come our way. But we have to, we have to do our part. We have to be like good fathers and good mothers. We have to take care of those that we can take care of. Thank you very much. And uh, we will look for you. I know you have to leave, Mr. Boutaris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Λοιπόν, 
Θέλω να, κυρία Τσιαμαντά, πριν ολοκληρώσουμε. Πριν ο Γιώργο Νικολάου θα τον βρείτε στο Σόλ. Σο Μίση Τσιαμαντά. And we know that you have your own site, and I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Dimitris Zafiriou, who is a professor of pediatrics, because as I said earlier, we speak about the future, about the past, and uh, the development of the city in general, but often we are lacking basic things such as, for example, a pediatric clinic in the city. This is one of uh, the greatest initiatives of uh, Stavros Nyarkos Foundation. I mean uh, the designs and the construction of the uh, Thessaloniki Pediatric Hospital. Uh, good evening um, and thank you for your invitation. I see many friends uh, here around me. I am by nature optimistic. I don't tend to complain that much. I don't think there's a place like Thessaloniki. There's no place than uh, Thessaloniki. Of course, Chalkidiki is our, our sister place. Of course, any place is judged by its state of education and health. I think that the health sector is okay. Uh, people come here from other countries. It's the worst place for an epidemiological research because of the constant change of population in the recent years. And indeed, we do lack a children's uh, hospital. We have uh, children's clinics in our hospitals. And uh, given uh, the, uh, the fact that the uh, Stavros Nyarkos Foundation is our kind uh, donor, we will have this children's uh, hospital in Filiro. Of course, this means that uh, the uh, necessary means of uh, public transport will have to be provided. So it's important to have a children's hospital so that uh, children who have to have an operation can go, can all go to the same place. I graduated from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, went abroad, then returned to do our research and clinical work here. So through clinical studies and research programs, uh, we try to ensure some pocket money for our researchers just to keep them from leaving. Thank you very much. Where can someone join? Okay, Thess. Okay, Thess. Is something we did in an effort for all of the curious people of the city to come together. By curious, I don't just mean curious about technology. So this is the place to come if you want to find out uh, whether there's a market for your uh, business idea. So please log on to okthes.gr. Ανταποκρίνονται μέχρι στιγμή και εκτό Θεσσαλονίκη ή κυρίω από Θεσσαλονίκη, εκδηλώνεται το ενδιαφέρον. Is your audience mainly in Thessaloniki? We have mandatory courses. So our participants are mainly from Thessaloniki, but we also have people from Ceres, Kilkis, and Chalkidiki. 
We try our best to give them the help that they need so that they can find out whether they should move ahead or not and not spend too much money for this. Thank you very much. We have some questions for Mr. Mikhailidis and Christos Exarchopoulos is up there waiting for our sign. We keep comparing Thessaloniki to Athens. We, are call it, we call it a co-capital. Isn't this keeping Thessaloniki behind? Absolutely. I think it's high time we stopped. Athenians and Athens are not uh, to blame. The division of problem from the time of Eleftherios uh, Venizelos is a thing of the past. It so happens, I know Mr. Zafiriou for medical reasons. He's an excellent professor of children's uh, neurology, but he's also an excellent uh, connoisseur of uh, music as well as a film critic. This is what Mr. Zafiriou is. How did this happen? He has been working very, very hard. So everything takes personal responsibility, lots of hard work and uh, private enterprise. So uh, let's just be Thessaloniki, not the former East Berlin. The mayor was right in saying that we just want the state to do everything. I'm a university graduate. And very many people like myself look for a job in Athens. Most of them think about staying there permanently. I think the problem is a lack of self-confidence. So how can one gain self-confidence? Barcelona is confident about itself in relation to Madrid, for example. Why do we lack this? Can we have your question as well? It's not a question. It's a brief comment. I think Thessaloniki doesn't have a plan. Everyone is creative in our microcosms. For example, we're traveling to Adana tomorrow, and what we are is representatives of Thessaloniki. We manage three European programs plus a virtual reality and SRF program. We work together with, with Mr. Andreadakis. Uh, we worship him, and we are also uh, going to have a shoe museum uh, built here in Thessaloniki. I used to be a bank uh, representative in Bulgaria in 1993, and for uh, 25 years now, I've been listening to arguments like uh, we are going to open up to the Balkans. This is a hinterland of 200 million. We don't use our potential here in Thessaloniki. The 50 plus age group can do so many things if they find the inspiration. Nice. 
but there is no plan. Something that the municipality and uh, the region of Central Macedonia can do. They're the only ones that are able to do it. Thank you. I will now give the floor to our speakers. And then we will end our discussion. Many people are disappointed. They think that there is destructuring all around us. Not really. Of course, many things can be improved, but our educators are doing so many things each and every day. Uh, there are open uh, university uh, courses on the internet, and our educators work with Western Thessaloniki as well, but it takes lots of personal work and interest. As to the well-offs of Thessaloniki, uh, when they go to Poser Baths for a spa or to Kaimaksalan Mountain uh, for ski, they should spend some time in Pella as well. Right. As to the well-offs, our culture of organizations went through very rough and very tough times. Uh, they need the support of uh, sponsors and donors. Our festivals and other cultural organizations managed to have several donors in cash and in kind. All of our uh, guests last uh, March had their restaurant uh, meals for free. Several uh, of them had their hotel accommodation for free, but you should knock at the door of our cultural organizations and be certain that uh, they will open it for you. Thank you for this highly interesting discussion. I think that the day after is up to us. Depending on our different capacity, capacities, we can all help create the new Thessaloniki of tomorrow that will be self-confident. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all very much. Our audience. We will be, we will grab a bite, but please take your belongings uh, with you because uh, we have Christos Exarchopoulos' DJ set and Yorgos Fokas with the folks. Thank you very much.